We can illustrate this consumption function as a graph. The horizontal axis reflects the level of income, Y, and the vertical axis, consumption spending, C. Autonomous consumption, C bar, is that part of consumption spending that is independent of the level of income. We've seen that even if income's zero, some consumption spending still takes place. And this is why, in this graph, autonomous consumption spending starts at a point on the vertical axis above zero. A change in autonomous consumption spending changes this vertical intercept. For instance, an increase in household wealth, and note I say wealth, not income, perhaps because a good investment has paid off or an inheritance has come through, will cause that household to increase their autonomous spending pattern. This is indicated by a higher vertical intercept. Now, we know there's a positive relationship between income and consumption spending. As income increases, so does consumption spending. And this must mean an upward sloping curve. An increase in income, for instance, from Y1 to Y2, indicates that consumption spending increases from C1 to C2. But because the marginal propensity to consume is less than 1, the increase in consumption spending from C1 to C2 is smaller than the change from Y1 to Y2. The slope or angle of the curve is determined by the marginal propensity to consume. It's equal to the change in C divided by a change in Y. Now, if income rises by 100 and the resulting change in consumption spending is 75, the marginal propensity to consume is 75 divided by 100, which is 0.75. This means that for every one rand rise in income, consumption spending goes up by 75 cents, and 25 cents is saved. The value decides the slope of the line,